We used to play in my uh, back garden. We had an old bomb shelter made out of tin, you know, that had still been left there. That used to throw the junk, and we cleared this out. We all used to crowd into this thing and play. Me and the washboard, and Len on the bass, and John on his guitar and whatnot. And a guy called Eric Griffiths who got a guitar too. And we all used to get in there and jam away, thinking we were the greatest things on earth. The village used to have a fete once a year. And this used to consist of taking a pretty girl from the neighborhood and crowning a rose queen and having a um, side shows and all this kind of thing. And my mother managed, because my mother was very clever at managing things like this, to organize it so that we were the entertainment. Now, well, first of all, we played in the back of the lorry in, a, in the field, which is the scouts field at the back of the church. And then in the evening, we went over to play for a dance that they were putting on. We were playing at that time, mostly Lonnie Donegan stuff, you know. And as I say, we thought we were terrific. And a lot of people said that we were, especially our mothers and aunties. <laughs> and um, Ivan had come along um, and brought this friend along, who, who he told us he was bringing along, who who he said could play the guitar pretty well. So after we'd finished playing, we came down off the stage and Ivan introduced this kid to us and his, happened, his name happened to be Paul McCartney, as we all know now. We went with a friend of mine whose name was Ivan. He's a good friend of ours, you see, and I met him years ago. I was at school with Ive. And I went to a village fete with Ivan and the group that was on the fete, one of them, or a few of them rather, were friends of Ivan's, and that was John and a couple of his mates, and they were in a little group then, playing... Oh, a large group. Paul was about 14, <laughs> well, I think. Little in stature, Little in say. name, I'd say, Paul, but rather gross. Large, large by number. Yes. Large <laughs> by number. We had banjos, things like that. Washboards, and... skiffle boots, the whole lot. And we spent about 20 minutes talking to him. At first, it was, like, very reserved, because John was always a bit, like, withdrawn or a bit careful about meeting new people. He used to like to suss them out. He, he'd never he'd never make the first move. People always had to come to him at first. And eventually Paul like came to him by getting his guitar out. Paul being the extrovert broke the kind of awkwardness by getting his guitar out and playing I think it was 20 flight rock. And it was good, you know. And John was obviously impressed by this, so we had a bit of a chat for a while, and as I say, about 20 minutes later, we all split up, and John and I were walking home together, and John said to me, um, what do you think of him, then, of Paul? And I said, uh, I think he's OK, I like him. And he said, well, should we ask him to join the band, then? And I said, yeah, it's OK by me if it's OK by him. And so that was that. We went home... <clears throat> Didn't see Paul again for a while, and I was just so happened I was the next person to see him. I'd come out of my house, he was riding past my house on his bike, he jumped off his bike just to start chatting. We chatted a bit past the time of day, and then it suddenly occurred to me that we decided to have him in the... We had decided to have him in the band. Wow, lucky guy. And uh, I said to him, oh, by the way, Paul, do you want to join the band? And he thought for a minute, very casually, and he said, uh, OK, then, and jumped on his bike and rode off. <laughs>